feelings when a storm hits like this. It, it, very dangerous out here. I thought a bomb had gone off out here or something with all the tree branches on the ground. Snow is here, it's building up rapidly. This is overwhelming. We'll get by. <laughs> Yeah, we'll struggle through it. This is a News 4 special, Ice Storm 96, Crisis and Survival. Getting through it, surviving Ice Storm 96, we all have learned it's easier said than done. Good evening, I'm Mary Amashima. And I'm Mark Wright. A lot of people are going to have to go cold turkey at the beginning of this Thanksgiving holiday weekend. Right now, about 25,000 homes and businesses are still without power here in the Spokane area. And tonight, News 4 brings you a comprehensive report on the storm that has affected all of our lives. Jeff Ray joins us live from the South Hill overlooking Spokane. Jeff? You know, Marianne, over the years, we've had storms packing stronger winds and even more, sto more snow, but never a disaster quite like this. At first, many of us thought winter was just arriving early. As we put this into motion, watch how fast the stream of moisture moved in. But this was no typical storm. Oh, man. Oh, it's really cold. You see your breath. That one's going to go, Carrie. Precipitation from the South Pacific was mixing with a cold front from the Arctic. Uh, we've expected wet snow, but this is some of the wettest snow that uh, we've ever had in this area. Really? Unusual weather for the inland northwest. At least we're not flooding, huh? The freezing rain bent branches. They're falling in the middle of the road all the time. Trees creaked and groaned. Just got full of ice, fell down on the roof. Soon they were snapping like matchsticks. Ice Storm 96 had begun. This is News 4 Daytime. KXLY was first to go on the air and sound the alarm. Because of the severe weather. You're one of the 70 to 100,000 people without power in the inland northwest. Depending on which power company serves you, you could be several days yet without power. As it did during Firestorm 91, KXLY News Talk 920 served as a beacon, offering information, encouragement, and advice. We also have some dry, free wood at Pacific Metal Company. If you need some firewood at Pacific Metal Company at 535. Is that a power line? No, it's a phone line. Streets were blocked, air traffic was snarled, and power companies were overwhelmed. Within hours, 100,000 homes and businesses were plunged into the darkness and the cold. Uh, I've been with the company for uh, over 30 years. Uh, in that time period, I have never... Uh, seen uh, a storm that has had this impact on, on our service territory. I'm wondering, is there an alternative number that a person could call to l for Washington Water Power regarding, um, I have a neighbor and our phones are going in and out on the South Hill and I'm at work, and um, during the night, her electrical box and live wires were ripped down by a tree from behind. Mm -hmm. and City and county officials declared an emergency. They set up an operations center and urged the community to prepare for the worst. As we assess this, uh, the reality is that we'll probably be out probably up to Thanksgiving before we're able to shut this down. West Command, what time would you like your brush rig to write? Better get a good picture. We don't see too many totals like this in the city limits. Ironically, the ice led to fire, and both took a terrible toll. Uh, we feel very fortunate. To be alive. People started burning wood, kerosene, and propane, setting the stage for an epidemic of house fires. And this is all due to lack of heat in homes. People are trying to come up with alternate uh, sources of heat, and uh, a lot of these are catching the fires. There were also problems for people who breathed the exhaust of machines they were hoping would keep them warm. I was getting ready for bed, and I heard uh, one of the tenants banging on the door of the trailer next to me. Appears to be a small hibachi-type barbecue. Two people have died. Well, they were using charcoal briquette. Pretty much destroyed the trailer and cost two lives. At least seven patients were treated for carbon monoxide poisoning. Two others were killed when they used charcoal to try to heat their trailer. It's sad because it's uh, avoidable. But other injuries seemed unavoidable. A woman and three children had a close brush with death when a giant icicle fell from a freeway light 
and crashed into their car. I blew the whole windshield and mirror and everything into my daughter and my lap and our faces. But the loss that shook Spokane was the death of this man, Washington Water Power employee Jimmy Dean. He was searching for a natural gas leak when he walked into a dangling power line and was electrocuted. It really does point out uh, the importance of, 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 of safety uh, around this issue, uh, not only for our employees, which we talk about every day, but also with the customers that are out there. Uh, these lines, uh, we have to believe that they're hot uh, and dangerous. Mm -hmm. KXLY News Talk 920's host, Mike Fitzsimmons, made an old Everly Brothers song the theme of this disaster. During our coldest moments, he urged people to be patient, stick together, and stay strong. It was great to know that somebody was sympathizing, empathizing, and going through it, too. Tonight, for thousands of people, the ordeal continues. But our street is an awful mess. For them... Just having electricity during the upcoming holiday weekend would put a big thanks in Thanksgiving. From the beginning, officials have warned us about branches falling from trees. Now they say with our warmer conditions, the soil has loosened. and We should watch for entire trees toppling down. Live from Cliff Drive, Jeff Ray, News 4. Even when you've seen it before, it still stuns you, doesn't it? Yeah, it is. Well, when we come back, what do you do when your home is no longer a safe haven? We're going to show you how we're all surviving Ice Storm 96 when we come back. Welcome back to a special edition of News 4. The storm hit early, but by evening, more than 100,000 people knew they had to go into survival mode. News Force Kerry Tomlinson joins us live from North Spokane with more on how we're all surviving. A symbol of this ice storm, the trees bent over, weary with the weight of the ice and the snow. Well, like the trees, all of us here have been carrying a heavy burden. And that is learning to survive in the aftermath of Ice Storm 96. It sounded like explosions going off up in the hills. It looked and sounded as if ice lightning had hit the inland northwest like cannons going off up in the hills from all the trees going down. But the most serious damage was much quieter and much more dangerous. Power went out in 100,000 homes and businesses. This might be a long night for everybody. Families shivered in their homes. It was really cold. In a darkness much darker and much colder than they had known before. The independent spirit of the Northwest showed at once. Families like the Trowbridges on the South Hill decided to stay in their homes with or without power. I don't know how I'll be after a week. It's only been three days. So after a week, ask me in a week, I bet you I won't be this <laughs> up and happy. <laughs> No way. It's been okay, it's just been cold. Many seniors at the Aquaview Apartments in Brown's Edition stayed put, huddled next to propane heaters. Patrick's got his straight in the fire. The Sullivans in North Spokane roasted hot dogs and marshmallows by the fire. It sticks to my hands. Mm -hmm. I had to eat off the stick. To the anxious delight of their dog, Pepper. And everybody slept in front of the fireplace and pets included. <laughs> as much body heat as possible. But in many homes, the cold was too much. People moved in with friends or relatives or checked in to hotels. May I direct your call? Storm refugees took every available room at the Rid Path and the Red Lion downtown. We got heat, don't have any room. Some paying more than $120 a night. It's a, a question of survival and, uh, and uh, it's a nice place to survive. But if hotels were full or wallets empty, we're trying to make it as, as, as close to being home as we can. Families turn to the shelters. Ready? Moving. Set. Go. Go. A half dozen of them set up from Fairchild Air Force Base to the valley to Coeur d'Alene. When I started seeing my breath, that's when it was time to come to a shelter. I want to be home. <laughs> I want to be home. Cheryl Storm and her son, KK, stayed at the shelter at Seth Woodard School. We don't want to sleep at my house when the cables are out, and we have to sleep in candlelight. Our house when I get, get off by, or she might fall in our house. 
so this is a real safe place for us. But it may be some time before they can go home again. I walked down there and told them that I had power lines down in my yard, and they told me I was like the 150th one on the list. The community worried about those who might be alone. Shelters took in seniors and disabled people who needed help. I got this one, John. The Spokane Fire Department went door to door in some neighborhoods. Hi there, fire department. Yeah. We're just checking to see if you got power back and yeah, we got it back. everybody's okay. Looking for victims of hypothermia or carbon monoxide poisoning. You start to go unconscious, you feel faint and nauseous. Um, you just don't really know what's going on and then you pass out and you'll eventually die from it. They found only Vicki Montague in this west central area without power. We've been using a propane burner. Okay, have you been keeping a crack in the door or window? Mm -hmm. Good. One of many desperate to feel warm and eat warm food. It's a barbecue with a burner on the side of it that we used to like make coffee and warm water up for hot chocolate for the kids. Life became a struggle. Driving difficult. Homes chilled damage everywhere. Makes me sad. I love that car more than anything. But out of the struggle, a creative side emerged. They can make a simple system to provide some heat to their home. A firefighter set up a radiator of sorts at his northeast Spokane station, running hot water through a hose and running the hose through rooms. Newman Lake residents stored milk outside in the snow. It's been a zoo. Stores found a way to stay open. It was just a sea of people. Despite outages. Well, we got a restock on batteries this morning, but they lasted about a half hour and they were gone. This south side rose hours had partial power. At least you can see what you're buying. In many of the stores, you have to have your own flashlight. And well, empty shelves, batteries cleaned out. This is frozen food out. Frozen food moved out to a refrigerator truck out back with the hopes that thousands of dollars worth of food would not spoil. The week rumbled on. Each day, new hopes for heat and power. Each day, new storms on the horizon. Outside, signs, trees, and power lines grew ice beards. In the lounge. That's an eye. Inside, real beards grew on tired faces. I haven't shaved for a couple days. The Trowbridges play game after game, perhaps a few games too many. Usually we'll get in fights, so we quit the games. They realize they don't want to live like the okay. pioneers. I just couldn't deal with it. <laughs> I couldn't. On the north side, the Sullivans finally gave in to the cold and went to stay with relatives. I just hope that when the heat comes back on that he hadn't have gotten so cold that he caught a bad cold or anything like that. In Brown's edition, Sherry Lacaz's worries for her parakeet are over. Pretty Billy. Power is Pretty finally Billy. back on for seniors at the Aquaview Apartments. All this was not in vain. This week of icy fear and basic survival there we go, wow. 2100. Brought families, neighbors, the community together. Well, if I were home tonight, it would be real lonesome. Tonight, it's, this, is, this is a treat to me, to be with people. And it has been raining all afternoon and evening, melting the snow and ice off of much of the trees, giving us hope that perhaps sometime soon, Ice Storm 96 could be over. Live in North Spokane, Kerry Tomlinson, News 4. Thanks, Kerry. Well, the signature of this storm, of course, the thousands of broken trees across the inland northwest. How will we clean up this mess? That story in just a minute. Well, during Ice Storm 96, people worked frantically to try to pick up, clean up, and pull their lives back together. It seemed the power was out and the trees down all over the place, and the hills were alive with the sounds of chainsaws. This is almost an emergency situation that we're trying to deal with right now. This is overwhelming. Well, we had Firestorm 91. That was because of the wind, you know, and this is just nature. Too bad all, we're losing all these trees. Been around here for years. Those people who wanted uh, trees pruned, they got it done for free last night. <laughs> what are we doing right now? It's a little cleanup. <laughs> in neighborhoods all over Spokane, people were getting out and cleaning up. This was really scary. When the tree came down, I thought it was coming through the roof. Impromptu cleanup brigades were formed, but they were battling both time and the elements. 
Hopefully it clears up soon and it all melts away. But power, or the lack of it, was the biggest concern. We've got hundreds of uh, calls from people that uh, either have power out, down power lines, or uh, trees are down over lines and they're on fire. What do you recommend for tonight for folks? Stay home or, or what? If they can stay indoors, please do it. Uh, you can hear them breaking up there. Scores of power lines were down. Others threatened by falling trees. We are familiar with emergencies. Uh, we are familiar with storms. But at first, Washington water power crews were overwhelmed with the number of emergency calls they had to handle. The utility called in reinforcements from other regional electric companies. We've got everybody that's available from here to Seattle working. Uh, you know, it's just a lot of damage. And slowly, very slowly, the battles started to be won. It's great. Power to the people. But the outage area was huge. At one time, as many as 100,000 homes and businesses didn't have power. Crews had to work around the clock. It's a lot better working in the light when it's light outside. It's a lot faster. This is everything uh, south of about 29th up to about uh, 37th here. But the outlying areas like Newman Lake were hit especially hard. I got a report of of 100 power poles being down on the ground. You get uh, things repaired behind you and move ahead and get that fixed, and you'd come to, to kick it back on, and the stuff behind you had gone out again, you know? So it's like somebody tells you to dig a hole, you dig the hole, and they fill it in, they tell you to dig it again. And when electricity began to come back on sporadically throughout the area, a new psychological phenomenon was created, power envy. There was a definite gulf between the haves and the have-nots. You kind of get used to the electricity, and suddenly when it's gone, you go, well. You don't realize, <laughs> you don't realize how good heat is <laughs> until you lose it. <laughs> and then you say, like, oops. One person may be without electricity. Been without since noon Tuesday. But the power's on right next door. So do you feel guilty? No. Go ahead. Go ahead and all the way down there. And all the while, the cleanup intensified. Mother Nature had turned majestic trees into kindling. We'll be here in a couple of weeks. And the rush was on to clear away the debris by any means possible and take it to the nearest collection facility. Again, with just all the facilities being closed for Thanksgiving Day. And other than that, we'll be ready to, to keep taking material in. If there was any comfort to be found in any of this, it was that no matter what you were going through, you weren't alone. Yeah, really a mess. Yeah. Well, we're not yet out of Ice Storm 96. When we come back tonight, how the people of the Inland Northwest are helping one another through the crisis. Welcome back to the program. The ice storm disaster is not over tonight. Thousands of people still do not have power and resources, some financial and emotional things are really beginning to wear thin. But there is one resource that has carried us through so far and seems never to run out here in the Inland Northwest, our desire to give, to help others through the long, dark night. Everyone's cold, they don't have fuel, electricity's off. The ice storm turned thousands of people into survivors. It's either here or stay in a cold house and thousands more into rescuers. Oh, we're offering them a place to sleep, a uh, shelter, a uh, roof over their head. The Red Cross opened shelters. Basically, this is the only place that we could come to. Faithful volunteers kept them going. We all have a place to stay overnight, and uh, as long as it takes to get this over. Yeah, we, we follow the firemen with water and hot coffee and snacks. Hundreds more walked in off the street to help. I'm lucky. I have no power in my house, but I've only been up since 5 this morning. There are other people who have been up 36 hours, and um, they are really wearing thin. We received 195. When the Red Cross asked for blankets, hundreds came in new or pulled off of beds to keep storm refugees warm. When the Red Cross asked for money, people gave $15,000 so far. The storm hit the food bank in the middle of its preparations for Thanksgiving, planning meals for 3,000 needy families. But suddenly, everyone was needy. Well, we're going to need more food. I mean, we used a lot today. 
Spokane stuffed the KXOY KZZU bus, filling it with blankets and food to help. Animal shelters took in pets while their owners spent the night in shelters of their own. A Spokane Valley pet store boarded birds for free until they could return to warm cages in warm homes. Now, Kenny, I want you to pick an apple out of your tree here. And a children's center offered some free time what color apple we for children to expend pent-up ice storm energy. It's my neighbor's tree. I'm just being neighborly. <laughs> People helped each other clean up. They ran extension cords from house to house and checked on neighbors. They offered free wood, a warm place to stay, or a kind word. My flesh and my heart may fail. And some gave everything they had. We've gathered here this morning to celebrate the life of a hero. WWP worker Jimmy Dean walked into a live power line and was killed. Jimmy died serving us. His family and co-workers shed tears remembering the way he'd love to tease. Your playful sense of humor and special smile will be with us forever. We love you, Jimmy. But the linemen return to work. They look at this as a war, as a battle, and they have a fallen comrade, but they, they know that they have to keep going, and I can tell you that that's the mentality that they have. And those people are still out there working. And our hearts go out to the family of uh, Jimmy Dean. There's one thing for certain, though, we can all get through this if we continue in this together. Thanks for joining us, folks. We'll see you at 11.